Hello, this is Mary Dubler, and this is part of a series about plants, trees, and flowers of the Bible. God created vegetation on day three, and in Genesis 1, verse 12, we read, The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed-bearing plants and trees with seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produced plants and trees of the same kind, and God saw that it was good. Today we look at the olive tree. This tree and its fruit have been prominent in the practical and spiritual lives of the nation of Israel for centuries, so it warrants a closer look. The olive tree is first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis 8 verse 11, when the dove Noah released returns to the ark with a fresh olive leaf, indicating the floodwaters were almost gone. The olive is also mentioned by Moses as he described the fruitfulness of the promised land God was leading the Israelites into. Deuteronomy 8, 6-10 reads, So obey the commands of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land of flowing streams and pools of water, with fountains and springs that gush out in the valleys and hills. It is a land of wheat and barley, of grapevines, fig trees, and pomegranates, of olive oil and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is as common as stone and copper is abundant in the hills. When you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Olive trees grow to a height of about 20 feet and have a broad, gnarled trunk. The trees do not form rings as they grow, so they are challenging to age. However, it is thought they can live and produce fruit up to 2,000 years. A single olive tree can produce around 20 gallons of oil, and oil is produced from the unripe green olives. In biblical times, during the harvest, the branches were shaken or beaten with sticks so the olives would fall to the ground to be collected and pressed for oil. In Deuteronomy 24.20, the people were instructed, When you beat the olives from your olive trees, don't go over the boughs twice. Leave the remaining olives for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. Cultivated olives are planted using shoots that grow at the base of another olive tree. Psalm 128 verse 3 uses this imagery in comparing children to olive shoots around the table. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots around your table. An olive shoot is also seen in the Messianic prophecy of Isaiah 11 verse 1. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. Oil in scripture is always olive oil, and it was used for anointing kings, as the fuel for lamps, to treat wounds and anoint the sick, and for making bread and other foods. Olive oil was also included in various sacrifices, usually mixed with fine flour. The trunk and branches of the olive tree look gnarly and interesting, and when cut, the wood is finely grained and has a rich amber color. This beautiful wood was used to make the doors and doorposts as well as the two 15-foot tall cherubim in the Holy of Holies of Solomon's Temple. The Garden of Gethsemane was a favorite retreat of Jesus and his disciples, and before his arrest, Jesus prayed there. Gethsemane means oil press, so the garden was an olive grove, and it is located at the base of the Mount of Olives opposite the Temple Mount of Jerusalem. Today, the Garden of Gethsemane has some still-producing olive trees that are more than 900 years old. It is unlikely any of the olive trees now there were present at the time of Christ because of the report that the Romans cut down all the trees in the area in their siege of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. Today, olive oil, especially extra virgin olive oil, is a highly prized commodity in Israel. Extra virgin olive oil is produced at the first gentle pressing of olives brought quickly from the harvested trees to the olive press. According to the Israel Foreign Ministry, Israel cultivates about 81,000 acres of olive orchards, producing 16,000 tons of extra virgin olive oil. This is Mary Dubler, and I hope you've enjoyed learning about the olive tree. From the Word of God, we leave you with this blessing based on Psalm 52, verse 8. May you be like an olive tree thriving in the house of God. May you always trust in God's unfailing love.